Hey, welcome to the exchange. I want to take a look at some retail earnings data. I mean, we're seeing inflation across the board, but I think it tells a very interesting story for all these various companies, kind of how they're reacting to inflation and really it's how it's affecting their overall profit margins. So what I pull up here, this is uh, basically earnings data from five major retailers plus Home Depot and Lowe's. So Walmart, Target, Ross, Under Armour, TJX is like TJ Maxx and Marshalls. Plus a couple of brands, a kind of conglomerate they have right there. Um, but we see right here is a basic revenue in billions across all these various retailers for uh, Q1 of this last week. Basically, what they just reported: revenue expectations from Wall Street, earnings per share expectations, as well as earnings per share actual, like what it actually came in at. Now, what I did down here is basically revenue surprise in percentage terms. Red being it's below expectations, green being it's above. Um, earnings per share surprise, same thing. Red is bad, green is good. Also, I did guidance. Uh, basically, whether they guided down yes or guided down no. So look at the actual revenue surprise here. I mean, they're all very, very similar. I mean, everyone basically missed a little bit by, you know, two, three, four percent. Target was an exception right there. I mean, you see them are positive green three percent. So they actually were positive. I mean, uh, Home Depot missed by three percent. Lowe's came in basically right in line with revenue expectations. But then look at earnings, earnings, uh, earnings per share surprise down here. I mean, it's been a bloodbath. And this is where we see inflation actually having an effect. It's not the actual top line itself, which is not going to be you know, as bad, but earnings per share, the actual like cost of goods sold is absolutely destroying their profit margins. So when we look at Walmart, 12% and you know, down 12%, you know, Target down 28%. Ross wasn't as bad. Uh, Under Armour, it looks really bad here, but again, look at here. I mean, it's a very, very small baseline. That's why it looks so you know, blown out of proportion, for example. Uh, TJX, again, positive 3% right there, which is absolute standout beat in my opinion for retail. So it's really the big so what here, and that's what we have to ask right now. So looking at earnings per share, I mean, for Walmart, I mean, they actually got, absolutely got crushed. Now for Target, it's like, I mean, you saw revenue surprise there of 3% on the upside, which is good. But again, you got to think about Target. I mean, it's just a higher end tier versus like a Walmart. It's a little bit higher, you know, for consumer discretionary income, and, you know, middle class and above. Um, so it's just a pricier brand overall, which explains that. Now, what's really surprised me too is look at Ross and TJX. These are more like you know off you know off sale or off the kind of beaten path kind of brands right there. Um, they they were not as bad, and it shows me really what's happening right now is basically a flocking to lower end prices if at all possible. We're seeing really wallet size you know come down across these various brands. People are trying to save money. They're trying to save money wherever they can to. So Ross and TJX actually are doing pretty well. Um, Under Armour is a little bit different. I mean, they really are a, kind of a, a mid-tier kind of premium brand, or at least, at least they think they are. But I mean, they're really having a brand equity problem across the board. They've, they've been having that for years. So it's not anything new, but now it's getting exposed by kind of this inflationary shock we've been having in these last few months. So you might look at this and be like, hey, the best ones to invest in are Home Depot and Lowe's. They maintain their 2022 guidance. I mean, they had strong earnings per share of beats. Even the revenue was pretty flat for both of them. But really the big issue there is really their customer base themselves. So it's it's contractors, number one, and number two, it's homeowners, which sounds really good though too, because you're thinking like, hey, high discretionary income, high wealth in general overall, or high cash flow for the for the contractors themselves. The issue is going to be though, is if we have a housing downturn, all these things are going to come over all of a sudden, all at once, people will be like, hey, do I want to do that, you know, build that new house? Do I want to do that new project? Do I want to do that new DIY project, for example? And the answer just might be no for some of these consumers, which could be a lot of, lot of lost demand across the board. Now, what's happening right now, if you look at earnings per share, is basically, and I did a video on this earlier, is as some of these commodities like lumber come way, way down very fast, basically you're maintaining a very high revenue base. And as that uh, cost of goods come down, you have a much higher profit margin there. Now it's not gonna maintain forever. The, the revenue side will come, or basically like the, the price side will come down with it eventually. But for right now, they're working through some of that higher end inventory. They're trying to work through some of the older inventory. It's a little bit pricier right now. So again, listen, I can have 2022. This will probably maintain that kind of margin percentage right there. But 2023, this is going to drop quite a bit. It's going to be a much more tighter squeeze back to the historical norms uh, going forward. But again, the big fear for them is a housing correction, which will affect them dramatically. Um, but the thing is, these are lagging basically uh, what I, I think is Walmart and you know, Target, for example. Now, as we recover on the front, basically on the back end of all this mess, Target and Walmart will recover first, and Home Depot and Lowe's probably should be a lagging kind of recover across the board. So I did medium dives, and then basically all these companies saw very you know earlier. And basically, if you want to see the actual full video, basically of all these various tabs I have, drop in the comments below. Say, hey, I want to see the full retail tabs video. Uh, but I want to show you this real fast from Target. I was looking at actual uh, traffic increase of three point nine percent. This is like actual bodies in store, you know, and it basically increased three point nine percent. But then look at actual same store comp sales. It'll increase to 3.4%. So what it's showing me is as prices increase dramatically, I mean, I would assume if basically retail kept up with the actual price increases for like demand side, it increased in the same ballpark as inflation somewhere in that area, but it's not right now. 
and really what that's showing me is actual cart size itself is shrinking dramatically and also overall like wallet size is shrinking dramatically too so i mean consumers are absolutely getting crushed by inflation right now but really we have to ask ourselves the question now is really what happens next where does inflation go and like me personally i think inflation probably topped out or it's near topping out early summer time frame and really that gives a couple scenarios kind of where it could go in the future so really, I see two different scenarios on this. Uh, really, for scenario number one is basically a, a medium inflation with a kind of a mediumish growth. So medium inflation, I would define as like three to five percent by the second half of this year. A uh, low growth um, or actually medium growth, I would say probably you know in a two to three percent range, which is very very challenging for an economy to grow because even though you can grow top line you know pretty well as inflation increases overall, the problem is going to be its actual real economic effects. I mean, inflation can absolutely crush these businesses. They can't adapt to it very very fast, and it's really going to crush their kind of the long term overall shareholder value you know, for all stocks across the board. And it's very, very dangerous for like a long-term economy, which I don't think this inflation is going to be long-term. I think Jerome Powell is going to crush it. And I think if inflation maintains kind of a 3 to 5% range, I mean, he's going to keep raising rates and keep dropping off the Fed balance sheet to really crush this entire inflation narrative. And in the process, he'll crush growth as well, too. Which really gets to scenario number two, and I think the scenario is much more likely is actually low inflation and low growth. And by, and by low inflation, I just mean hey, two percent average inflation, kind of historical norms we've had for the past, you know, you know, 10, 15 years or so, roughly. Also, low growth. I'm saying anywhere from zero percent to two percent. I mean, this this growth effect we could be having right now could be almost like a COVID hangover effect, where all of a sudden you have like you know super high spending, super high growth in 2020, 2021. I mean, this could just be a hangover year where all of a sudden growth basically is flat. We're basically trying to maintain what we got right now and just maintain kind of that baseline. Inflation would be low potentially too in the long term, basically as consumer spending and consumer demand drops quite a bit. But again, long term, I really look at this situation as a very positive for investors because in this kind of environment where you have low inflation, low growth, you know where you're actually investing, in, where you've, most of your money is actually tech and innovation. So it's almost like in a weird way, we've gone full circle back to like the ARK ETF and Kathy Wood and kind of these big tech high flying names, which I mean, have absolutely been crushed in the past few months and few years, but that's where the money ends up might going back in the future as we go full circle in this entire inflation kind of you know economic shock narrative. Hey, be sure to like the video. Also drop a comment down below if you're investing in these companies, whether you're in the bull side or the bear side overall. Also like what your thoughts are on inflation in general right now too. Um, be sure to sub the channel down there for content just like this across various companies, you know, stocks, markets, etc. But uh, yeah, that's the exchange.